You're listening to the 10X Your Agency podcast, where every Wednesday for the next 12 weeks, you'll be learning strategies on how to scale up your agency and grow your client base from successful agency owners who've been there, done it, and built a highly successful agency. You'll learn how they attract clients, what their biggest causes of client churn were, and what their challenges were at different stages of building their agency. My name is Marcus Taylor, and I'll be your host. Hey guys, welcome to the final episode of the 10X Your Agency podcast series. Today, I'm joined by a very, very special guest, Mark Wright, who's the founder of Climb Online and was the winner of The Apprentice. So in this episode, I'm going to be talking to Mark about what he's learned from having Lord Alan Sugar as a business partner, how he's used PR to to get his agency up to a point where he has over 200 clients and over £1.5 million in annual turnover in under two years. Mark, it's a huge pleasure having you here on the show. How's it going? Very good. Thank you very much for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure. Awesome. So I was wondering, before we jump in, if you can maybe just tell us a little bit about Climb Online, what it is the agency does and how you came about setting it up. Yeah, well, um, Climb Online is um, it's a digital marketing agency, as, as we all know, as the name says on the tin. Um, I founded Climb Online in 2000. Uh, and 15, January 2015, on the success of winning the 2014 Apprentice. Uh, so Lord Sugar and I did a joint venture. He invested £250,000 off the back of me winning the show. We opened in January 2015, uh, and we, we started from there. So basically, we have very um, standard services, as any digital marketing agency does. We do anything from design and build websites, paid media campaigns, that's PPC, uh, social media, and SEO. And uh, we've just got into the creative side of things as well, doing brand guidelines, logos, and things like that. But it's a full-service digital marketing agency, and uh, we aim to help businesses increase their awareness online and generate more leads and sales sales for themselves. Awesome. When you first launched Climb Online, there was there was a little bit of early criticism about the, the business model and how the company was launched, particularly from the kind of the more the digital marketing community. You've since done a, a pretty amazing job at proving those people wrong. You've signed up over 270 clients, turning over over 4 million in under two years. What I was wondering is if you could go back to that January 2015 and redo it all over again, is there anything that you would do differently or in in a kind of strange way? Was that early criticism? Did that just add more kind of fuel to the fire? It's a very good question, actually. It's an interesting one. Um, My personality is one of I don't worry about what anyone else is saying. And my advice for any business owner in any industry, particular digital marketing ones, is when you become successful, now this is the third digital marketing agency I've um, owned and run, and people don't see all the hard work that goes in before you become well known in your sector. But whenever you're doing well, whenever you have a reputation, whenever a lot of people know you, people want to start to bring you down. Uh, mm-hmm. And that was off the back of my success on The Apprentice. A lot of people were critical, uh, and we hadn't even, in our fairness, begun yet. So they were critical of uh, basically nothing. But the key for me was to to focus on what other people are saying, but to focus on what we were doing. And the main thing for me is to go out each day and sign up a new customer and to look after that customer. And if you worry too much about what other people are saying with you, you'll get drawn into it and you'll start to go backwards. So what I do is focus on getting the customers, provide them good results. They provide me with referrals and my business grows. Uh, And if I was to sit around and respond to every blog article or phone call I got, um, you know, saying nasty things about us, we wouldn't have had the success we've had today. Got it. And so it's it's quite clear from looking at how you've approached growing the agency that PR has played a very important role in in the growth of the business and, and how you've built up um, such an impressive client list. What would be your advice to another business owner on how to generate the, the, the caliber of PR opportunities that, that you've been able to get, obviously excluding the advice of, of Win the Apprentice? Sure. Well, one of my sort of strengths as a business person, I think, and one of the things I try and instill in the people I mentor or the people I advise at talks or um, in training is that you need to be your own 
best publicist. So before I won The Apprentice, I used to do talks for free. I would go to networking events and I would do things to promote myself within the industry. To be successful, I think, in business, you need to be seen as a sort of leader um, within your own sector or an expert. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I read and I study a lot about what's happening in digital marketing and in business. I promote myself through industry talks and events and I'm always putting myself out there. And initially, I did it at schools. I did it at universities universities where they would let me speak for free until eventually I got a reputation for being well-known in digital marketing and good at speaking. And then I would get paid opportunities. Those opportunities would get bigger. The followings of the companies that would ask me to speak would get bigger. So things like Twitter and Instagram and social media would start to build off the back of it. And I think PR and personal PR and company PR plays a massive role in the perception of how your company is viewed. And if people look at you and they look at your business and they see it as an example of success, they'll want to use your services. Yeah, and I suppose there's that kind of snowball effect, as you say, like over time, it just gets easier and easier to kind of, you know, get those those bigger opportunities. Would it be fair to kind of say that PR is the main driving force for kind of top of the funnel lead generation for the business or are there kind of other aspects that are more important for generating leads for climb online um they are most important and i reiterate this every single time is the most important thing to generate business is looking after the business you've got mm. um, the main source of revenues for my company is referrals from customers that we've had you know our, our main whilst we you know we mentioned at the start of the interview how many customers we signed up last year and our turnover which is fantastic the main source of our turnover came from our existing customer base increasing their budgets which I thought was really interesting it mm. sort of shows that the work we're doing is getting our customers results and they're prepared to a cross sell into other products and increase the budgets they have on um, particular products where we're able to make more money with those particular customers because they were seeing results and so many marketing agencies out there focus on getting the whip on their sales team to get out and get new deals and they forget about the customer base that they already have that have perfectly good running businesses that can spend you know incredible budgets on marketing with you. Mm. That actually leads me on to another question that I had. You mentioned this this kind of element of upselling, cross-selling the, the customers that you, you currently have. One thing when I was kind of learning a bit more about Climb Online is that the way that you've approached pricing is is quite different, I suppose, to the to a typical digital SEO PPC agency in that I, I believe your plans start around £300. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And we're highly criticized for that as well, both internally and externally. You know, I have a lot of my senior management team ask me why I set the prices like that. And it's the same way that when I walk into Sainsbury's to get my milk, it's at the back of the shop. What I believe is the key to, you know, creating momentum and success within the business is is exactly that, is momentum, is people seeing a new custom come in and working on new challenges. So what we do is those smaller campaigns, three, 500, anything under a 1,000 really, we don't make any money on. It's impossible uh, because the, for a technician to service the work, it, it, it services at a loss. But what that creates is momentum in my sales force, and it also gives us an opportunity to use businesses that have never done digital marketing before. Now, we get them on board. We introduce them to the power of digital marketing and the effect that it can have on their business. And then, like a miracle, what starts to happen is they want more of the good stuff. They want more leads. They want more sales. And they want to see them you know, higher up the rankings on Google or they want to see uh, video ads on YouTube or they want to do Google ads, whatever it might be they start to spend more money. And actually, some of our customers, one of our biggest customers went from almost a £300 budget to £70,000 spend on Google. And that's the sort of success that I think you can have with your customers. And it's the easiest people to get on board is because the other agencies are all going in for the three to £5,000 a month customers. And everyone forgets below that bracket that there's still perfectly good business trading in this country that, that don't want to spend that money. Mm. So this was like a very deliberate strategic decision to go after almost like an untapped market, I guess, the lower companies with, that don't have the sort of two, three grand a month upwards budgets for this. Exactly. Because what, what I sort of found was a lot of the business owners, a lot of the businesses that use us have those budgets, they're massive businesses. They just didn't believe in digital marketing. It's more going in and showing, you know, the proof of the puddings in the eating. Say, listen, what are you prepared to spend? 500 pounds. Okay, well, give us what you're prepared to spend. 
and we'll show you results. And then when we come back and ask for a thousand pounds, you're going to give it to us, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. And then all of a sudden, it's a case of just proving your worth. But most businesses don't want to work for their money. They want to have a five thousand pound customer come on at five thousand pound and then keep them as long as they can keep them. And I think that that is a lazy way of trading. I think you should always be looking to see how can I do this better? How can I get more results for my customer and show them more products and service to improve their business? Because if I improve their business and make them more money, they'll spend more money with my business. And I can see how sort of two years into the business, there's a lot of data and learnings that, that come in in that amount of time to, to optimize the service to get those acceptable level of kind of upselling and cross-selling. When you first started signing customers on, was that approach working or did it take a lot of tweaking and adjusting to get it right? When we first started the business, the model was literally we opened with no customers was to just go out and sell deals get customers using your service because at the end of the day, that's what keeps us going. That's all that matters is getting people on. So initially, it was just hit the road, go out, work with my team. I would ring companies up. Literally, I would cold call them myself. I would email them myself. I would go and do talks at business networking events myself and sign up customers. And then once we had a sort of base of about 40 to 50 customers, then they started to grow. Then they started to refer then we started to cross sell and upsell and we started to get inbound leads. And once you get in that position, I think 100 customers plus, the momentum of the business starts to carry itself. Mm, got it. So since launching the company, you, you've no doubt been exposed to hundreds of these different businesses, different business models and learned the ups and downs of agency life. You mentioned this is, I think, the third agency that you've run. If you were starting out from scratch today or if you were going on The Apprentice this year, would you still build an agency or is there a different business model or industry that you'd be curious to maybe try instead? Um, yeah, good question. I think that, you know, I sit in four meetings a day with other businesses, other sectors. Uh, and if I was to go on The Apprentice again now, I would still to go with a digital marketing agency. In fact, someone was saying to me the other day, they were interested in, you know, buying Climb Online or something like this. They were saying, well, you built an incredible business. Would you ever consider selling it? And I said, well, not at the minute because I wouldn't know what else to do. I would start another digital marketing agency. So at the moment, my passion is still firmly working at Climb Online and building that and working in digital marketing. I haven't met many industries that are as exciting, that changes frequently, and that you can enjoy your work as much as you can in digital marketing. I sort of almost got an impression like that because when I was looking over the Climb Online website and some of the stuff you're doing, it's very interwoven currently with your personal brand and winning The Apprentice, which which makes total sense to use that. But it did kind of make me wonder, like, you know, what's your end goal with this? Because if it were to sell the agency, there's an element of that maybe making that challenging. So is your sort of current long-term vision with this to keep doing what you're doing or, or do you see any kind of major shift or end goal around what you want to do with climb online yeah i think uh you know i still love it here I, i've just got back i took my um eight top performing staff to las vegas last week um for a holiday and we've just got back a couple of days ago and you know i inject or try to inject my personality into the place because i love digital marketing and i love the culture here so much that if i believe in it it'll continue to grow as it has done now what will start to happen over the next couple of years is the size will get too big for me to affect it personally as you sort of get to 100 150 staff i will not have the same effect across the business because i can only be in one place at one time but what we the, the plan is for the next 5 years is just to keep expanding as we have done ie globally so looking at australia south africa america dubai those sorts of places and then we'll either look to trade publicly or to sell the business into a, a bigger group of digital marketing companies to get more media buying power because that is the way you can really scale it forward. Now, as we go to sort of 100 plus stuff, I will move myself away from being that sort of main face of the business because otherwise, if it's too tied to me, it drops the value of the company. The more it can run as a brand and on itself, the more powerful the business is without me. Amazing. Really exciting vision. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Before we go on, if you're looking to grow your client base and capture more leads for your agency, then I'd recommend checking out Leadformly. 
Leadformly is a lead generation tool run by yours truly that enables you to upgrade the forms on your website to conversion optimized forms that are going to increase your conversion rate and help you capture more qualified leads from your website. Using Leadformly, we've seen agencies capture up to 700% more leads. So if you're interested in giving it a try, we have a 14 day free trial that you can check out at leadformly.com. That's L-E-A-D-F-O-R-M-L-Y.com. Once again, that's at leadformly.com. Mark, what I want to do is before we start to wrap up, and I've got a couple of quick fire questions that I want to go through. But before we go into that, I think I, I read somewhere in an interview that you did that you said that Lord Sugar's advice is worth just as much as the quarter of a million pounds that he invested in the company. I was wondering what's been the most life-changing concept or lesson that you've learned from him? He's taught me quite a lot, to be completely honest with you. I spent a lot of time with him over the last couple of years. And it's more just general life advice. I mean, the first thing he sort of ran through to me, why he feels some digital marketing agencies are successful and some are is what we talked about at the start is uh, looking after companies that you already have on your books. And he's a big believer in providing transparent, reliable service for the customers you have so they stay with you and create longevity. That was his first advice, and I've really, really stuck to that in the ethos of the company. The second bit of advice was just life advice. He said to me, too, that business is for fun and property is to make money. And he said that, you know, out of all these businesses he's had, he's made the most money in property. And I've then gone on to buy some houses off the back of that advice, which has been really good. And the other thing was the importance of watching your sort of pennies in your business, um, watching the costs. He's, you know, I think uh, when you're dealing with a billionaire as a business partner, you think that he doesn't look at the two and the four pounds. And one day we, um, I was working with him and he had a debit come out of his company for 21 pounds that should have been eight pounds. And he spent a couple of hours on the phone making sure that he was reimbursed the difference. And I said to him, Lord Sugar, you know, you're a billionaire. I'm sure you can let sort of 11 quid or whatever it was go by the wayside. He said, but as soon as you start thinking 11 quid's not much money, then bigger amounts start to come out. And once you lose that diligence, the business starts to go down. And I think lessons like that, you can't learn in a textbook. Uh, You need to watch that from successful people for it to really sink in. What are your other role models? Lord Sugar as a business partner is pretty much as good as it's going to get. But are there other people that you look to for this kind of caliber of advice? Um, Well, it's people you're exposed to, isn't it? They say birds of a feather flock together, who you surround yourself with. A lot of my friends and the people I associate with are all business owners. They're all speakers. They are all people that are pushing forward in the the world of business. But generally, you know, I really look up to and respect what Lord Sugar's done. I also watch a lot of things on YouTube, a lot of audio books. I listen to one audio book a week. So in terms of having one particular role model or hero, I don't really have that, but I just do a lot of self-learning and I surround myself with people that are really pushing the boundaries of what they're doing day to day. Amazing. Well, Mark, what I want to do is to wrap up, I've got a couple of quick fire questions I want to go through. So the first one is what would be your number one book or audio book recommendation for other business owners? I've got a couple here for you. I think that my favorite book I've ever read is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon mm. Hill, which is just incredible. I mean, if, if, if any of your listeners haven't uh, read that, they need to pause this now and run down to the bookshop and get that uh, because it's literally life-changing. I think uh, audio book wise, I've just finished one called The Alchemist by Pablo Coelho, which was really, really good. Mm-hmm. And and if you're into YouTube, more visual stuff, uh, The Men Who Built America was a mini series on YouTube, which is absolutely sensational. And I think if you want to be motivated about business and you're interested in making money, that series is, you know, a couple of hours watch and it is it is pretty um, hard hitting. Amazing. A couple of my favorites in there as well. Second question is, what's the favorite tool that you're currently using at Climb Online? That is a very, very good question. I think my favorite tool for doing technical work, we've got a new one called PPC Samurai, which we use, um, which has been very effective in helping the performance of our clients' campaigns, especially the lower budget campaigns, increase in performance. And a lot of the day-to-day running the business software that we use for companies out there that are looking or people out there looking to start an agency, the two pieces of software that I couldn't have started without is our direct debit system, Go Cardless, which takes the money from, I mean, these are 
whilst they're not tools that uh, help our customers, they've helped me incredibly run and manage the business. Um, Go Carvest, which takes payments from our customers, and Cash Flow, which is our day-to-day management of um, our accounts. And it's really funny that I mention that because they're not digital marketing, but I think they're really effective tools to run a digital marketing company. And not many people ever give that advice out. And I, I know I struggled to, to choose those sorts of things when I started. What would be one piece of advice that you would give to an agency owner looking to go from six figures up to seven figures? Yeah, very good question because I think there's so many agencies and so many agencies owners in that six-figure bracket. Mm. Um, And what they do, because I mentor about three of them, and they get stuck in the doing all the work themselves mode. Mm. Uh, I have a passion for digital marketing, so I've got a few businesses that I do SEO for or Google Ads for myself, And but I just, I've got sort of 10 or 20 clients and I can't go any further because I can't do any more work. The key thing is, is if you want to take your business to the next level, you cannot be on it. You can't be doing the work. It is impossible. To run a business successfully, you have to be running the business. So you need people to do the work and you need people to sell or you need to be out selling on new business. So I used to do the work myself and then it got to a point where I think I had 23 customers and I hit that threshold as well. I was turning over about 170000 a year and I could not go any further than that. Then I got my first employee I got, and then I had a freelancer do help me with some of the work and I, that allowed me to be able to go out and sell new customers on and I was able to scale it from that point to a million pounds turnover. So what happens is, especially in our industry in digital marketing, is people obsess over the quality and you know getting in really involved in the campaigns and as the owner you cannot do that i'm afraid if you want to take it to a scalable size got it really good advice what's one of the biggest causes of client churn that you've seen at climb online and what's something that you've seen be a, an effective solution to solve it this is another key question for for agency owners that that, that listen to this is client churn is um is a big one uh if for, for any agency or any business that is a service-based business we're quite fortuitous last year our retention rate was 91 percent um wow. so we have a, a, an above average considerably above average um retention rate the two key things that i see uh customers churning for is uh, the, the old I can do it myself job. A lot of companies uh, see the success that we provide and then think, well, actually, I could save their fee and do this myself. And the main thing to combat that is to educate the customer consistently on what you're doing that's adding value, i.e., the tools that you're using and the software that you're using that are expensive to run and that need consistent training to run them, the benefits of those tools and what they're having on the accounts and the value for money that you are providing and that as an agency, you're at the coalface and the, the knowledge interface of the area and where if you're working in-house, you are limited to the knowledge of your industry and you don't know what other people are doing. And I think that that is a good way to combat that. But the main thing is people taking it in-house or less lack of knowledge and, and it comes back to You need to educate your staff so they're educating your customers uh, and you'll have less and less churn. But unfortunately, there's no business out there in this country or in any country that has 100% retention because businesses go broke, people change their strategies to spend money, and the first thing that affects is is your marketing and PR budget when people go through tough times. So you just need to have a good personal relationship with each of your customers and add value every time you see them and you'll be as successful as you can be. Great advice. So my last question for you, Mark, is what's next for Climb Online? Well, it's an exciting time for us, really. I think that we're at that two-year mark now. We've just brought on uh, a sort of another 10 staff here. We've just opened another office down in Bristol in the southwest, um, and we've hit that sort of 40 staff mark. So we're really moving forward quite quickly. For us, it's about heavy expansion. We're opening a regional offices all in the UK this year and then looking to go abroad. But we want to start to look at acquiring other agencies, bringing on their customer bases uh, and bringing on more and more staff and customers this year of 2017. And um, it's just exciting for us because we're loving what we're doing. So it's, it's more of the same for us this year. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you've got an incredible, very exciting year ahead of you. A huge thank you for coming on the show and sharing all of these insights with us. Um, lots of really, really great stuff. If people want to learn a little bit more about yourself or a bit more about uh, the agency, what's the best place for them to to find out a bit more? 
Well, it's to, to go to our website, which is climb-online.co.uk, um, or you can follow me on Twitter. If you just search for Mark Wright, I'll be uh, one of the first results there. And uh, come through, give us an inquiry. We'd love to chat any businesses out there that uh, are looking for digital marketing. We always love to help. And yeah, we love being part of an industry which is growing and booming at the moment as well. Awesome. Mark, again, it's been a huge pleasure having you here on the show. And yeah, a huge thank you for your time. Thanks, Marcus. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to this episode of the 10X Your Agency podcast. If you're interested in acquiring more leads for your business, I'd like to invite you to a free webinar that I'll be hosting on how to acquire 300% more leads from your website without increasing your traffic. In this webinar, I'll be sharing how you can turn your website into a lead generation machine, four strategies on how you can boost your form submissions by 300% and much more. So if you're interested, all you need to do is go to Google, type in lead formally, acquire more leads. That's lead formally spelled L-E-A-D-F-O-R-M-L-Y, acquire more leads. And the landing page to register for the webinar should appear at the top. As I said, it's completely free and we run this webinar every single week. So once again, thanks for listening to this week's episode and stay tuned for next week's episode of the 10 Agency podcast.